Alhamdulillah, the very first uh, section of the book is on dua and salah. Okay, so we're going to just jump right into it. The protecting friend. Allah is your protecting friend. You can call on him again and again. When you're tired or you're at ease, you can make dua anytime you please. Day or night, it is your choice. It pleases him to hear your voice. You can talk to Allah about your day. You can ask him to take your pain away. When you're happy or when you're scared, your protecting friend is always there. In your pajamas or in your best clothes, after gym class or smelling like a rose, ask Allah silently or ask out loud when you're all alone or in a crowd. The line is open for you to say what's in your heart, night or day. Dua is almost like making a call. You don't have to prepare anything at all. The King of Kings. Prayer is different than making dua. Prayer is like we're visiting Allah. Even when we visit a friend, we go the time they say to attend. We wear good clothes and comb our hair. Go all dirty, we would not dare. We follow directions to get to their house, for if we don't, we will get lost. We have good manners when we're there. Ignoring them would not be fair. So when we visit the King of Kings, we keep in mind all these things. We go the times he invites us in. We can't be late if we want to win. We groom ourselves the way he taught about what is right and what is not. We follow our beloved Nabi's directions for his worship was complete perfection. We try to do everything just right as Allah's guests were more than polite. Such an awesome thing to pray and be with Allah five times a day. The gentle, the forgiving. Allah is gentle and he draws us near. And because we love him, we love to appear at his door to help remind us of all his gifts and all his kindness. Our salah reminds us to be good the way that every Muslim should. Our prophet said that prayer is light, a light that shows us wrong from right, a calming light that guides our way so our path is straight and not astray. Prayer will give you extra power. It protects your heart like a castle tower. So learn your salah and do your best to make your prayer a time for rest. Allah, his Rasul, and our blessed scholars have special guidelines that they have taught us about purity and prayer contained in this book. So just relax and take a look. We made the rhyme so you'll have fun, and you'll be wiser when you're done. Then be with Allah, the gentle, the forgiving, and thank Him for the life you are living. The next section is on purity. What's purity mean? Who can tell me? Raise your hand. Yes? Cleanliness, mashallah, very good. <clears throat> the fard acts of wudu. Okay? Three parts to wash and one part to wipe, and they are each of a different type. The one part you wipe is your head, so don't dry, try to wash your head instead. Face, arms, and feet, it is very true. You must wash them to make wudu. When you wash, here is the difference. The water must drip in this instance. First face, then arms, then head, then feet. The fard of wudu are now complete. To wash your face, all must be wet. Do it right and you're all set. From top of forehead to bottom of chin, do it right and you will win. From one earlobe to the other, tell your sister and your brother, if all is wet, then all is good. You did it like the prophet would. Wash hands and arms, all must be wet. Do it right and you're all set. Include your elbow, it must be wet, do it right, and you're all set. A fourth of your head above the ears is what you wipe, so have no fears. Include the ankles when you wash your feet, 
Now all the essentials are complete. And you can see, mashallah, in the illustrations here, there's, you know, children doing wudu and doing different parts that are described in the rhymes. Alhamdulillah. So a lot of fun uh, pictures to look at. <clears throat> the next section is on actions that break wudu. No, there are things that break your wudu. Like when the jasa or air comes out of you. Every time this happens to you, please make sure to repeat your wudu. When you're praying, you're talking to Allah. Laughing quietly will break your salat. But while you're praying, it is also true. Laughing aloud will break your wudu. Wudu puts you in a purified state. You know what's happening when you're awake. But if you happen to lie down to sleep, repeat your wudu, your state to keep. The next section is on water. If you make your wudu in a beautiful way, the Prophet will know you on judgment day. Your limbs will shine and he will know it's because of wudu your face does glow. If you have very little water, whether you're a son or a daughter, your face, your arms, your head, your feet, the fard of wudu are now complete. If the fard are done in a perfect way, to Allah Most High, now you can pray. If you miss your face, arms, head, or feet, then your wudu is not complete. But if you know you have enough water, whether you're a son or a daughter, then of course it's nothing new. You should do a complete wudu. The next section is washing. The, there are some things that stick to your skin. The water just rolls and can't get in. If this ever happens to you, please clean it off before making wudu. If some najasa gets onto you, you truly don't have to repeat your wudu. Just wash it off up to three times. Aren't you glad this lesson rhymes? If najasa is there but you can't really see, then you must always wash it times three. After you do, there's no, no need to doubt that all the najasa is already out. In the washroom, you take care of your need. Wipe, wash, wipe is best indeed. In the washroom, you take care of your need. Wearing slippers is best indeed. <clears throat> now the section on prayer. Or salat. The fard conditions before prayer. Before I can even start to pray, I have to be sure it's the right time of day. Purify my body, my clothes, and my space. Girls cover, cover all except hands, feet, and face. But for the boys, it happens to be right below the navel to right below the knee. Toward the qibla, I turn my chest and heart. I make the intention to pray before I start. I stand and say, Allahu Akbar, Allah is the greatest. I have a picture of the family all praying together. The fard integrals within the prayer. Now we come to the bones of the prayer, but it is only the very first layer. If you forget any of these, repeat the entire prayer, please. All of us must stand, and I truly can. I must recite one verse of Qur'an, but I do not recite it behind the imam. I must bow to the Lord of the worlds. I must prostrate to the maker of boys and girls. I must sit at the final sitting, as long as the shahid to do Allah's bidding. If you forget any of these, repeat the entire prayer, please. The wajib, what you say. Now we come to the flesh of the prayer, but it is only the second layer. If you forget any of these, do a special prostration, please. There are things that you say and things that you do, and the way that you do them is important too. For a fard prayer, these are the rules. For a fard prayer, these are the tools. Al-Fatiha is one of the surahs you say. In the first two rakahs, recite it when you pray. 
A surah or three verses is also what you say. In the first two rakahs, recite it when you pray. Wajib, what you say, section two. <clears throat> For sunnah and witr, these are the rules. For sunnah and witr, these are the tools. Al-Fatiha is one of the surahs you say in every rakah. Recite it when you pray. A surah or three verses is also what you say in every rakah. Recite it when you pray. In the second and last rakah, sit and say the shahid for Allah. Remember, when you're praying your salah, you are really talking to Allah. And say two salam when your prayers end to people, the imam, and the angels intend. If you forget any of these, do a special prostration, please. Wajib, how you recite. <coughs> How you recite is something you do. How you recite is important too. To recite aloud means others can hear. When you do your prayers, you have nothing to fear. To recite quietly means only you can hear. When you do your prayers, you have nothing to fear. In Fajr, Maghrib, Isha, Quran is recited aloud by the Imam only and not the crowd. And for all five prayers behind the Imam, you recite everything except the Quran. A girl recites quietly when praying alone. Allah made it easy for her to pray at home. For Fajr, Maghrib, Isha, boys have a choice to recite in a loud or quiet voice. The choice is when they're praying alone, but the masjid is better than praying at home. If you forget any of these, do a special prostration, please. Wedge of the postures of prayer. The postures of prayer are something you do. The postures of prayer are important too. Make two prostrations in each rakah. In prostration, you're closest to Allah. Between your prostrations, for a moment be still. To be calm and peaceful is Allah's will. After you bow, for a moment be still. To be calm and peaceful is Allah's will. You should sit in the second rakah. Allah will ask you about your salah. How long should you be sitting? The length of tashahud for you and me. If you forget any of these, do a special prostration, please. The prostration of forgetfulness. How do you do the special prostr prostration? I will give you an explanation. You do it all at the final sitting. First say tashahud from the beginning. One salam to the right, then two prostrations is the shortest explanation. After the prostrations, you remain sitting. Then again, start the shahud from the beginning. Then as always, durud and dua, ending with salams, completes the salah. Now that you know it, alhamdulillah, now you can do it, mashaAllah. <clears throat> Actions that break the prayer. Know there are things that break your salah. So have good manners when you pray to Allah. If you do any of these, start your prayer over, please. Your only movement should be the prayer. Moving too much means you don't care. You shouldn't talk, you shouldn't eat. The king of kings is the one you meet. Do not moan and do not cry. Keep your heart with Allah Most High. Do not cough without need or change direction. You are under Allah's protection. Recite by heart and not a book. The place of sajda is where you look. Recite correctly with all your heart. Allah and you will never part. <clears throat> and this is a du'a, the book of the remembrance of Allah, or a hadith, excuse me. Mu'ad radiallahu anh reported that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took hold of my hand and said, O oh Mu'ad, by Allah I love you. So I advise you to never forget to recite after every prayer. Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. 
And that means, oh Allah, help me remember you, to be grateful to you, and to worship you in an excellent manner. <clears throat> now, at this point, the book offers parents and teachers a lot of resources and information to explain the terms that were read throughout the rhymes to your children. So all of the different Arabic terms that you heard, uh, like najasa, right, fadld, it's important to explain these to your children. So here you can go through that. And it also breaks down the actual rulings from the fiqh. So what, why we have these different rules and how to explain those to your children or to your students, inshallah. And mashallah, she's done a wonderful job of, again, breaking that down um, and, and really making it simple to teach.